Hi, I'm Jeremy. Hi, I'm Clayton. We're Touche Mori, and you're watching Andy. Andy. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Touche Amore. Hello. Hi. How's it going? How are you both doing today? Good. Good so far. Good. Yeah. You made it in your country just fine. Yes, you did. Welcome to <laughs> Toronto. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just want to kick things off by diving right into stage four. Aside from being excited that it's officially out, how else are you feeling at the moment? Uh, yeah, definitely excited that it's out. Excited that we get to go out and play new songs. That's kind of the best part of being in a band so uh yeah that's kind of the main excitement that i'm feeling around that right now i feel like with this day and age like <clears throat> it takes so long for records to come out yeah you know uh you look at stuff in the 90s and things took three months like a band would finish recording and then three months later it would be out already and now we're dealing with we finished the record basically we finished recording it at the end of february and it came out at mid to so you're just waiting just so sitting on yeah. it you just want people to hear it and, and you spend you, a year writing it before yeah. then so so yeah it it's, feels very nice to finally have everybody able, be able to hear it i think well congrats on its release thank you the album cover for the record is just beautiful but for me i was wondering what's the significance of the 300 that's to the to the right of it it's 306 uh it's actually 306 okay. so you wouldn't be able to tell because i know it's a collage but um it's the address to uh the house i was raised in um my mother's house and our buddy ryan came and took a bunch of photos of it um of my mom's house uh, before I had to clear it out after my mom had passed away and then came back and reshot the exact same photos in the exact same spots and then it was just sort of a collage of the two together so that's like what the whole if there there's, we have like a deluxe version of the record it's like the whole photo you know it's, it's just a whole bunch of different photos of like different aspects of the house and everything like that so yeah oh, I love that I wasn't able to make it to the gallery that you guys put on but I did see all the photographs and I just thought it was so beautiful that you were able to put that together yeah, we're we're definitely excited to do it. The artist uh, Anthony did a he, he he's his, his whole thing is collaging essentially. So we gave him the things that our buddy Ryan had took the photos of, and he sat for a few months and collaged it together in a way that he liked, and it turned out really beautifully. So we're really happy with the result. We were happy he was actually able to be there. Yeah, I don't want to butcher his last name, but I think it's Garachi. Garasi. Garas. <laughs> G E R A C E. Anthony G E R A C E. When in he's doubt, spell it out. Yep, yeah, exactly. Insta he's on Instagram. You can see all this stuff. Yeah. A lot of this record is about your mother and her bout with cancer. But when you were putting this album together and writing everything, did you find it was more therapeutic? Was it a hard album to write because of that? Um, yeah, therapeutic is a good term. You know, I I didn't want to start writing lyrics until we had like a good amount of songs written musically. I always write after anyway, but this one in particular, I wanted to wait until we had like, maybe, I think we had like four or five songs written before I started, just because it's sort of like that whole opening the floodgates and then not knowing where to put what. And so if I have all these different sort of palettes like in front of me, I can sort of figure like, okay, this one's a little more fast and aggressive. So it could be a more like, you know, uh, angry song or like angry with like you know how things went sort of song or like this song could be more storytelling about her and things like that so um i think the first song i wrote lyrics to was benediction and then the second one was new halloween um but after that i'm not i kind of lose track but uh yeah those are the first ones we had written for the record there's a song on the album that is a little bit slower paced and that's skyscraper which features the amazing julian baker so how did that collaboration come about um, I kind of found out about her through some friends in Memphis. Um, I had heard her record that she kind of just put online for free, and I was a really big fan of her, and we all kind of became really big fans of her. And when we were writing the record, we, we didn't want to put anything out there like we have to have a song where she sings or something like that, but we put in the back of our minds, like, if the spot comes up, that would be cool, then that would be awesome. And... We wrote that song and I think it was kind of directly inspired by, the, mo vocally at least from like a, you know, Leonard Cohen sort of thing. Um, you know, how he kind of sings the, a baritone voice and then you have a beautiful female voice over yeah. the top of it. So when Jeremy decided to sing the way he did on that song, it just made sense to have her. So we reached out and she did it extremely quickly and Two brought hours. some, yeah, <laughs> really? yeah, we She's sent it wow. to her and she pretty much went and did it and sent it back. and. 
uh, we were totally blown away at the result, and we were just happy to be able to work with her at all. That's great. So. She's great. She's wonderful. She is. I interviewed her a few months back, and she is just you know such a nice great. She is. She's yeah. she's awesome. Yeah. We got to talk about donuts, which is one of her favorite things. That was so much fun. There you go. <laughs> just speaking about donuts, there's actually a touche amole out there. You there guys is. have your own donut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw the photograph where you guys were like cheers and eating it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that shop in uh, Los Angeles. It's all like donut band puns and things like that. So uh, we've always wanted one. So we're excited. We we got to have one. It was like a thing with the new record. Like if you bought the donut and the CD, it's yeah. like eight bucks or something. So uh, that's where we're at in this day and age <laughs> in the music industry. You can get a, donut, <laughs> a CD for under ten dollars. You have some <laughs> awesome merch aside from the donut that was going on in that shop. For you guys, when you look at all the merch you have, do you have a favorite piece of Touche Amore merch? I don't. I, 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 I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't because, you know, your taste change as time goes on. and Merch is fleeting. Merch it's is fleeting, exactly. Changing, you know? sure. always, so, mer- and, uh, yeah, I think for both of us, we're not We as, like very basic shit. Yeah, and we're just not, like, that's not our focus, really, you know, in the band. The other guitar player, Nick, is uh, the one who designs... 90 percent of the merch so for us we're always like oh that looks beautiful yeah, right? works. Yeah, no. there you go <laughs> it says our name and there you go yeah. <laughs> because you guys play so many shows as a band i feel a lot of fans don't realize that you're also music lovers so when it comes to shows what was the last concert you went to as a fan what was the last show I went to? oh i went and saw uh and you'll notice by the trail of dead uh play all of source tags and codes from start to finish and it was awesome because I never got I for some reason whenever they were uh playing around that time of that record I just wasn't around like like they I was either out of town or I just yeah couldn't you know, make the it. show was sold out something like that so um getting to see them in general but then getting to see them play that record start to finish was like so awesome and I've just been listening to it uh like it's new again over and over like man this record is so ahead of its time it's great yeah mine was nostalgic as well i think the last show i went to was the p.s elliott reunion in los angeles so yeah shout out to the crutchfield sisters (laughs) (laughs) from reading the comments that you have on all of your socials you can really tell this record is resonating with a lot of people now that you're on the road with tiny moving parts have people been coming up to you at the shows just to kind of speak to how much the record means to them uh yeah yeah, it's not an easy thing. Of course. You know, like, I I get why and everything, but, uh, you know, you get done playing and you get done singing these songs about it and all that sort of stuff. It's like sort of in the forefront of your mind and, like, you kind of just maybe cooling down a little bit and, like, want to just sort of drink some water and say hi to people and high-five people and stuff and then just... I can't fault anyone for it because I understand why, but just every... Every person's just like, hey, nice to meet you, you know? Like, uh, I lost my dad, I lost my mom, I lost my girlfriend, I lost my, and and, uh, and I just feel so bad. And I just, the hard part is I never know what to say. You know, like, thank you is not an appropriate response because like, it, that, that's not what they're, you know, you're just like, uh. So I just say, I'm sorry. And then like, I hope the show helps or I hope the record helps or something like that. But it's just, you know, it's it's hard but again like i can't fault anyone for it like i get why they're doing it like music touches people in that way and you know people under uh, you find comfort in those sorts of things and and i found comfort in that in music all my life so again i get it but it's not easy yeah. it's not easy i appreciate you sharing that I appreciate it. yeah i want to do a little quick fire round with the two of you so whatever okay. comes to mind just spit it out sure okay all right so the first one is if you could trade places with another artist for a day who would that be um, like uh, live or dead? Sure. Well, actually, you don't want to do it for a day because you'd probably be dead. But like at the in the heyday of their career? Sure. Does that work? Okay. Uh, I guess I would be curious to know would be to be like uh, like David Bowie at the you know in the seventies or something. That would be be interesting. Um, that would be. Uh, <laughs> Ziggy Stardust era somewhere in there <laughs> you know I, my immediate thought would be something like to be somewhere re- around for at least a day of like the you know DC punk stuff you know like uh, 
getting to play a show as a member of, you know, Minor Threat or Rites of Spring or any of that yeah. sort of stuff to sort of see that in action. Like, you see a bunch of flyers of a lot of those shows, and you're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe all these bands <laughs> play together. So to even, like, yeah, attend one of their shows, let alone get to play on stage, would be pretty cool. So That's I'll, a good I'll one. I'll take one of those. Yeah. Nice. Which toppings must go on a pizza for both of you? Oh, I'm very boring. I'm cheese. I'm very boring. I'm very boring. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any must, but I do like a lot of vegetables, so okay. the more vegetables, the better. What's a film you can watch over and over? The Big Lebowski. Pulp Fiction. Do you prefer singing in the car or the shower? Car. Car. That was fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah singing easy. in the shower, like, you, got, you probably get good tone in there, you know? It's got, like, that the the, reverb in there, but... Just, For some reason, even though it's more private in my shower, I feel more private in my car. I listen to music in my car. I don't listen to music necessarily in the shower unless like, I true. really plan it. So it's like with, in the car, you have it, You already have the, the beat. Yes, you have all the means right in yeah. front of you. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one, which curse word do you use the most? Which what? Curse word do you use the most? Oh, so we're allowed to cuss on this Oh, one. yeah. Definitely fuck. Probably fuck. <laughs> Probably. Or damn it. I feel like I say damn it a lot. Was that a curse word? I don't Are we going TV? I don't know. What are you allowed to say on TV in Canada? <laughs> you can say anything you no, want. No, can't in Canada. Oh, in though. Canada, like, what yeah, can yeah. you say? You, can, you can't really curse much at all. What? Can you say damn it? Yeah. What about shit? Has shit come over here yet? Because <laughs> you can say shit on Comedy Central now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, but probably fuck. fuck. Yeah. Probably fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then just to wrap everything up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who will be viewing the interview? Thanks for being so nice to us and, you know, continuing to listen to our records or come to our shows or anything like that. That's very nice of you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Same sentiment. I want to say thank you so much for chatting with us today. I really appreciate it. You got Thanks it. for having us. It's my pleasure. And remember, to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. See you next time.